What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I am joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, good morning, and how you good doing? Mo- good afternoon. Exciting day. No, it's still morning for you there, big guy. Noon. It is noon. Um, Exciting day. Good Good. Good afternoon. You just woke up, so... Um, I did not. <laughs> oh, all, right, all right, all right. Jokes aside, yes. Big news coming out of Angel's Camp today. Surprising news. Angels were really bringing up Zach Neto, first round pick. How do you feel about this? You good? Bad? Indifferent? Um, I'm excited. Uh, he plays the shortstop position, which I think the Angels have needed. Uh, I've said that all off season. They needed to go get a shortstop. So, um, can, can I use one of your words? Cautiously optimistic. Wow. Yes. Um, no, I, I'm really excited to see the Angels actually have a true shortstop. This is the first time in a long time that they've had a true shortstop that um, will be able to play some defense and should hit. And I know people are going to say, oh, Gio Urshela or David Fletcher or whatever. No, this this guy is a actual shortstop. David Fletcher is the second baseman. Gio Urshela is the third baseman. Um, so th- this is exciting. I, I'm partially optimistic to see you know where he's at. Um, very little minor league experience. He played at the Division One level, so he's a little bit more um, ready than some of these high school kids and some of these uh, younger college kids. But we'll see where he's at. This is gonna be this is gonna be fun if if he gets going. This team is completely different than where I thought they could be without a shortstop. All of a sudden, here, yeah, Nate. All of a sudden, you you got to be good up the middle, and and this is this is important. Like shortstop is the most important position on the field besides pitchers. Like if you have a good shortstop, you're usually in the hunt for things. So yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Congratulations, uh, Zach. I know. Yes, congratulations to Zach and his family. Yes. It's a big you, day for him. And and to make it at, at Fenway, that, that's gotta be real you special. You better you'll you go Fenway to Yankee Stadium, which is which is crazy. Mm-hmm. You don't see too mm-hmm. many guys being able to do that. But um, but yeah, you know, it's uh I'm extremely excited, excited for him, friend of the show as well we talked yeah. to him we we did talk to him in the off season it's always fun we to did. talk to those type of guys and all of us yeah no real really good guy the thing that stood out to me the most um before i kind of give my my initial you know thoughts on this the thing that stood out to me the most with zach and talking to him is he has a different mindset than i feel like a lot of a lot of guys do you know it's that it's kind of an old school mindset not a lot of guys have it too much i don't think anymore it's just go out there play love the game and play a hundred percent too. You know, I know it's not, I know it's not possible to play a hundred percent for 162 straight games. You know, you can have to take some days off, but that was one of the things that stood out the most to me was he just is a, an absolute gamer and wants to do anything to win and help his team out. And I think that is a huge step for the angels in the right direction. Not that the angels have a lot of eye guys, but I mean, we've, we've talked about it before in the past with, guys that are making 30 plus million dollars on the angels, the big three Rendon, trout and Otani. Um, I'm not calling those I guys, but I mean, there is an aspect of baseball that is, you know, to yourself. And it is a, a game played by a team full of individual people and individual stats, if that makes sense. So yes, you want those three guys to produce, but you also want them to be a team player. And sometimes it doesn't feel like it out of those three guys. um, A lot of the times. So with that being said, though, I'm extremely excited for Zach and his family. Fantastic family. Uh, I've talked to them quite a few times, and it's just, you know, fantastic all the way around. Extremely excited for them. Like you said, at Fenway, um, initial thoughts, again, excited, worried a little bit. Very similar to the Joe Adele in 2020. Different environment. Different environment. You know, with you have fans in the stands. You have, you know, everything is, you know, itself back to normal. You don't have to be away from teammates, so they'll have that. Um, but it does feel like we are in a very similar situation to 2020 Joe Adele when they brought up Adele and it was kind of that last ditch effort to make it to the playoffs. Granted, we are 12, 14 games in here for the angels and it's a little bit different, um, on that side of stuff. There's 140 something games left, 150 something games left, but it definitely feels a little bit like a panic move to bring somebody up like this with 44 games in the minors and everything like that 
it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me at all. I think that I think that he is ready, and it wouldn't have surprised me at some point this year to bring him up. It wouldn't. I mean, you, we saw him in spring. We saw what he could do in spring. We saw he was with a big club. We saw he could play with a big club, you know. And I don't know if there are too many holes in his game at the moment in the minor league level. And I I mentioned this to somebody today. I said it was, it was kind of a panic move um, by, by Perry and staff, I think. You know, I think that they're on the hot seat for sure. However, the argument back to me was how much more could he have done in the minors? Is that an is that a good argument? Um, so the one thing that he hasn't really had is failure. And so you you would have liked to see him go maybe two months of like, hey, I can do this. Like, yeah, he did it last year, but can he repeat? And and guys get off to hot starts all the time. I mean, we've seen it. So that that's the one thing that is going to be the big, big question mark. I think it was a big question mark with Joe Adele too. It's like, how does he deal with failure? And um, it, it's not easy when you've been the best at, at your position, the best at, at everything your entire life, like Joe Adele, Zach Neto, they've been, they've been top players their entire lives. Uh, Neto was a top, top pick first rounder. So again, he probably hasn't failed too often. He probably hasn't gone in and been like, Hey, I'm one for 15 especially at this level where they're going to be expecting a lot more out of him. So that's the only thing that I'm, I'm worried about is what happens if he gets off to the Anthony Volpe type of type of year. And it's like, uh Oh, panic. So that's my biggest, biggest thing is like, we, we want to see that maturity out of him. But um, the only way to do that is to just give him more opportunities. And yeah, he, he looks like he was ready, but it's a very small sample size and you know, it, it's going to be a concern always. I think that's going to be a concern for everyone is are, are, is it a panic move? And I, I think that's a fair question to ask because 44 games, this is like very, very little. One of the least amount of games played for a position player, obviously, you know, we, we've had uh, Mike Leak who, who went straight, straight to the bigs out of college I think that was the last guy to do it. Strasburg, um, Harper. I mean, even Trout was in the minors for two years. But yeah, Harper didn't. obviously was in the minors for a while, for a little bit of time. Strasburg was, and I think pitching is a little bit easier to do um, than than hitting. But yeah, it's it's going to be a concern, and we'll we'll see what what happens. But yeah, it, it does feel a little panicky to me. Like, oh crap. We we went through the analytics. We saw that, you know, our, our analytics said Rangifo could play shortstop, Fletcher could play shortstop, or Shelley could play shortstop. And they're going through it going, uh oh, Rangifo can barely play second base. This is not good. Uh Fletcher's not hitting his own weight. This is not good. Um Urshela's playing good enough, but like the defensive metrics, I it's it's probably not as good as they thought it was going to be from Urshela. Urshela's playing well, though. He's hitting good. But it's like, not only does Urshela's numbers matter, I think Drury being as bad as he does, as, as bad as he has been, uh, matters a little bit as well. Because now it's like, hey, Urshela's been swinging it. We can slide him over to first, or we can slide him over to second. Drury has been oh, He's been very bad at second base. He's been very, very bad at second base. Rangifo has been very bad at second base. So now this just opens up more holes. Um, and yeah, I do feel like this could be a little bit of a panic. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with you, which, which, which is why I brought it up. And I mean, we got wind of of this happening um, last night. Uh, in, in full honesty with you guys, we got wind of something happening last night. And it just, again, it started feeling like, like panic, 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 especially after a tough game like that uh, in in Boston, where you saw all the errors. With that being said, go back to the failure side, failing your side of things. Um, first year at Campbell, he uh, didn't play. Twenty twenty, obviously had the COVID year, played in three games. Uh, Twenty twenty one, he won the shortstop job, uh, <laughs> slashed four hundred five, four eighty eight, seven forty six. Uh, his second full year at Campbell was starting at shortstop again. The year he got drafted. 2022, 407, 514, 769, 
Um, and then in his 37 games with Rocket City, 342, 418, 550, played those seven games when he got uh, after he got drafted with um, High A Tri City. Um, now, when it comes to the failure, this is something that that was interesting. I, I don't remember if we talked to talked to Zach about this, but he was not a sought after player out of out of high school. Was like a top top 100 player in Florida rankings whatever you want to take to that had i believe he had one d1 offer i think it was the campbell if again if i'm not mistaken there and took it and won a job so when it comes to failure that's something going back even farther you know i think that he has he has had i think that that like coming out of high school not being a top recruit having one d1 d1 you know uh offer and winning a job in his sophomore year at shortstop batting four, then batting 400, then winning the job. And then all of a sudden earning a first round selection. I think that that's a little different route for, I mean, we were big, we were big fans of sending guys to try city to go failure, mm -hmm. fail, especially the hitters. And that's where you're going to see that. Um, I, I think that coming out of college is a little bit different um, as well. And I think Zach Neto's background is also a little bit different on that, on that side yeah. of stuff too. So um, then Joe Adele, it just, it's, it's glaring resemblances. Um, cause Billy brought up Joe as kind of a panic move in 2020 to say like, you know, we've, we talked about this before off the record and we'll talk about it here, you know, to say, Hey, look who I brought up. Uh, you know, we have farm system, we have people ready to go and we have people that can, that are ready to produce. And Joe Adele clearly hasn't really been that guy, you know, we've seen him produce in the minors, but you know, he probably got brought up a little too quickly. Um, so with Zach Neto, it's one of the things that, that I am definitely worried about. I'm extremely excited to see him, see what he can do on a daily basis with the angels. Cause I mean, I think I've watched almost every single one of his minor league games. And I, I do agree with, with the person that asked me the question, if, if, is there anything that he can do in the minors? Cause I, I don't know if there's anything else he really needed to work on in the minors. I mean, he was like, not the most pro ready guy. You know, he wasn't Reed Detmers in 2020, where it was like, hey, this guy's pretty pro ready or Garrett Crochet. We were talking about those guys coming straight up or, you know, even like Ben Joyce, it was like, you know, he, he, he's he got to work on command. He needs to work on a secondary out pitch, but I mean, you got to get that guy up. And speaking of that, speaking of Ben Joyce, I think he's the next guy that they're going to bring up. Um, and I think so. I, w with, with Zach Neto coming up, it wouldn't surprise me if it happened fairly quickly. Uh, you know, so. The one issue is the bullpen is, is it's a weird spot. Like you're, you're going to have to DFA a guy or you're going to have to send someone down. Uh, and the well, only guy you can at, send down is Hergit. At this point, they the Angels DF did not DFA. The Angels sent down David Fletcher, which yeah. is su surprising. I, I don't think it's surprising to you and I because I think that was one of the moves. It was surprising because I didn't know he had options. Did you know he had options? Yes. I didn't, I didn't think he. I didn't know he had options. So that's when it surprised me. I was like, oh, David, Fle interesting. Didn't didn't know he had options there. Um, but uh, but I mean, when you look at the numbers, you look at everything. It's like. Yeah, you know, David Fletcher, it makes a lot of sense that he got sent down. I was saying Renifo. I was like, they might send down Renifo and and bring up, you know, somebody like a like a you know Trey Cabbage or Levon Soto or somebody like that who can play defensively. Um, well, Levon Soto has been abysmal at the at AAA. He's hitting yeah. under two hundred. Like it's been rough. Yeah. So it and that and I, I know people are probably asking where is Levon Soto? And he is exactly who you and I said he was going to be. He He's playing like Andrew Velasquez in AAA, and that he he's been really really good defensively. But like that's kind of where he's at. Um, I know that the next move besides Ben Joyce could be Trey Cabbage, like you've mentioned. Yeah. Jake Lamb, depending Jake on where Walsh is. Yeah, depending on where Walsh is, and, and Walsh is is coming back to California, so could be could be able to kind of figure out a timetable for him coming up shortly. But yeah, this is. This is an interesting move. We're we're excited for for Zach and his family, and mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not going to be an easy thing. I mean, Gunnar Henderson came up, didn't have to play shortstop. He was able to play third, uh, played a little bit of short. But you're you're seeing this with Anthony Volpe right now. He has a 67 WRC plus. He's hitting over. He's hitting under 200 right now. He's playing really good defense, but he is struggling offensively. And I think we all remember when Trout got called up his first year, he struggled a little bit. So we we can't expect him to come up and set the world on fire right away. Mm -hmm. Like he he could easily set the world on fire. But I, I think it's unfair to him and everyone to, to sit here and be like, okay, if this guy's not hitting four 
three fifty, four hundred right away, then like he's an absolute bust. So just wanted to say that because I know that that's how this thing's going to work. Yep. And, and expectations got to set expectations up front. I, and I hate bringing up trout because trout's an outlier. Trout is Mike, Mike trout, one of the best players in baseball, but he struggled. A lot of guys struggle a lot, a lot, a lot of guys struggle. Not everybody is Julio Rodriguez. Not everybody is, you know, even Bryce Harper, I, I'd say struggled a lot. And now, you know, he's on his way to be becoming a hall of famer. So uh, wrong. I don't, I don't want to say this. You see the Island guys a lot of the times play really well. And when they come up like the Yasiel Puig type of thing, it's like Yasiel Puig next Mike Trout, you know? Um, And in all, in all fairness, Zach Neto is actually Cuban. So you never know. He could get very, very hot very quickly, but a lot of times, you know, you don't, you don't see it out of the the guys from the States a lot. It's, it's more of a conservative approach. Um, Zach's different though. I think we, I think we learned that on our interview. I think we learned that. Just by watching him in the minors, he is he's a different beast. The Angels haven't had somebody like like Zach in, in quite some time. Um, same thing with Ben Joyce. The Angels haven't had somebody like those two guys in quite a while. So I'm I'm excited. But again, Angels fans, temper expectations. Let's uh <laughs> let's let this kid play. Let's see what he can do. Again, very minimal since 2020. You know, he got two years of two years of college baseball. He played 44 games in the minors, and, and we'll just kind of see how that goes. So mm-hmm. With all that being said, guys, thank you so much for listening. You can follow myself on Twitter at Jared underscore Tim's Nate at Nate Green 34. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day.